scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to do. In Daniel chapter 2, when you read from verse 46 to 49, the Bible tells us about Daniel and his friends. It says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshipped Daniel imagine that level of leadership and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders unto him 47 watch a very big lesson here the king answered unto daniel and said of a truth it is that your god is the god of gods and the lord of kings a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldest reveal this secret 48 it says then the king made daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler of the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon so Christians can go this far next verse 49 then Daniel requested of the king now this scripture every time I read it I am amazed look the level of honor that happened to a man in one moment yet he never talked about it he requested of the king he said if I stand alone, I need support systems of like-minded believers. Therefore, king, let me use my influence now in leadership. Appoint for me Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. He says, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. What a leader. We must trust God for grace to stand in partnership with veterans of government to restore visionary leadership. We must change that narrative about Africa, that we are just a people who are out to get. Historically, we've been a people deprived. And when you come from a foundation of, de of deprivation, there is, there is an economic and sociological rehabilitation that must happen to your mind. Otherwise, when you access power, you will view power from the lens of your pain. This is what is happening. It doesn't mean that the leaders are evil. People are sincere, but sincerity is not the only seed for transformation. It takes strategic intelligence, not just from a sociological standpoint. We must import intelligence that is not affordable in the world of men. For as long as we keep praying in tongues alone and just fasting and falling down in church alone and it ends there, there are dimensions of spiritual reality we may not be able to capture. But I look forward to times where people will love God so much. In the parliaments, they will come up with policies. They will come up with ideas. Our country can work. Our regions can work. Our continent can work. It only takes an allowance. And let me tell you this. This is the reason why God has granted us grace. He said, I set you above nations, kings, not only to uproot, but to build, to plant. When you plant a thing, it's because you want it to grow. So they that be planted in the house of God, there should be growth. They should flourish in the courts of our God. Hallelujah. This is one of the reasons why we don't just preach alone. We have been able to help, well, for the first phase, the school of ministry. And I trust that God will help us to partner with very visionary bodies. 
to help rehabilitate people not just complain and say our uh, young people are dying we have to come up with policies more than gifts policies a gift does not change transformation is what really really changes there are many of us here we have this vision but that impetus the drive the limit of our influence should not just be pulpit alone a true apostolic grace is not even a preaching grace. A true apostolic grace is a governmental grace. Titus 1 verse 1 comes from the word apostolos, a sent one, an envoy, a communicator and a defender of a government. The true assignment of the apostolic is territorial, to coordinate the boundary of God's program per dispensation. And we'll pray in intercession we'll pray as we help god will grant us grace to be able to build not just a people who are prayerful not just a people who are coming to church alone but people who can translate spiritual laws into wisdom keys and principles that the nation can be blessed by don't just sit down expecting what will Nigeria give me and we're angry insulting government now I'm not justifying we have our different kinds of leadership but believing sitting down and being entitled to just say people will come and change us and bless us is a dream that will never come to pass but we must trust God for visionary people who can rise that we should we will restore meritocracy back to our system that people who are deserving are truly honored in business in governance in career the education regardless of tribal affiliation and whatever kind of sentiment this is that if we fail in this then we have failed if we fail in this and we make a name we have still failed if we fail in this and buy houses we have failed if we fail in this and go around the nations we have failed but if you do not have any of these things i mentioned and you achieve this you won if christ tarries let us do our best to give the generations that are coming what we probably did not have the privilege to receive rather than complaining and insulting the national anthem of this country says that the labor of our heroes past it says that it shall never be in vain very powerful oh god of creation direct our noble cause guide our leaders right help our youth the truth to know listen in love and honesty to grow and live in just and true the result great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice This is church this is why we are here if there was no cause we will not be here why am I saying this because being part of the vision you must connect with understanding not just sympathy and loyalty to a man because of what is trending I assure you the journey will not always be just smiling there are times you will have to engage it's a journey that will require courage. It's a journey that will require strength. People like new things. People like what trends. It's human, but we must sustain the stamina and the staying power to be focused, to be visionary. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our mandate in this city. There are 3.2 million people there about demographically speaking in this city if we cannot influence 300,000 people with this ideology we have failed 10% is the minimum standard of influence 
Yes, sir. You cannot change a society if you do not influence that much people. This is not about church. This is not about membership. This is about transferring an ideology that is superior to a people to correct their understanding, correct their paradigm, and produce results that glorify Christ, bless society, and better the lives of people. So there will be a combination of spirituality, signs and wonders. There will be dimensions that will come from the economy. Because you see, the end time project, kingdom come project can never be, be fought just from the standpoint of the supernatural alone. There are people who will come from an economic standpoint. There are people who come from a governmental standpoint. There are people who come from a career standpoint. My charge to us, therefore, is that whilst I am honored, honored beyond measure for your support, your participation, and for coming to open up your heart and be part of this vision, I want you to know that more than a man, first look up to Jesus then focus on the vision then you may look at the man the man is only a privileged point man but the agenda is bigger than a man the assignment always is that we will decrease so that he will increase to decrease does not mean to be small to decrease means to give him space so that he will be seen are we together what then is your own role let me tell you what your role is in this vision number one your first role connecting to this vision is prayer prayer no matter how anointed God has helped us to be we need prayer prayer for strength prayer for stamina Prayer for longevity. Prayer for health. Number two, what is your role? Your participation and your connection to the vision. Genuine connection. Connection is a covenant. In the days that follow, we we'll have the opportunity to teach on covenant. Covenant was a strategy that was designed to ensure consistency in man regardless of his emotional limitations covenant is an invention of the intelligence of god because men are emotional our faculties of perception according to god the highest faculty of perception should be discernment then reasoning based on laws then emotions if emotions have a toll on us the danger is that we will never have the same power to push visions to their fruition so we start so many things businesses ministries churches organizations and we're excited the euphoria of the new but a covenant consciousness is what gives you the staying power even when emotions fail man is an emotional being that's why anything that god intends to last he does not trust it until there is a covenant that binds it whether it is marriage, whether it is service, anything that has to do with kingdom advance, relationships, if there is no covenant that binds it, you cannot secure God's attention because human beings are emotional. This ministry, the work of the ministry is by covenant, not feelings. You will wake up one day and it will look like someone sat on you, but the covenant will drive past your emotions and your pain. The king's business requires haste. So your participation in this ministry should be based on covenant. The revelation that there is an agenda bigger than the man. The agenda is bigger than the man. Your third role that you have to play is partnership. Partnership here does not necessarily just talk of money alone. God has brought a number of you people of influence 
partnership is any contribution that comes from your influence from your access that can help ease up the work can help promote kingdom come is partnership when Nehemiah was about to build the wall he obtained permission from the king and that granted him access the permission and the materials for the building and he made that building complete I believe in influence and I believe that some of you who are people of influence that God has brought here is for a reason and for a time like this everything finds its credence when it is connected to kingdom come there is nothing on its own that really blesses the blessing from it is the degree to which it is connected to kingdom come money access influence everything finally what is your role in this vision to be an extension of the vision to others there are six local governments in this region the FCT and 80% of the activities happen within the Abuja municipal area every other region must be able to experience the hand of God the over 3.2 million people thereabout it is important that they are reached and that we become extensions of this vision there are people who need to be saved there are people who need to be healed. There are people who need to be delivered. We must be agents, extensions of this vision. There are people who God needs to single them out and lift them. We must be able to bring them to the place of the anointing where they can encounter the grace that makes this happen. If this happens, then there is a partnership between us. But for now, we are going to pray. Three things and then we are done tonight. The first is you are going to pray for me and you are going to pray for the vision. Second, I'm going to pray for you and I will speak over your life. Third is that we are going to leave this place with a strong conviction that as we gather week in, week out, already, you know, I was humbled and I said, my God, I thought we got one of the largest venues in this city we did our best to make sure the overflows there are three overflows down a little space outside and when I came I said what in the world is going on here and one of you here sent me a text and said apostle you know what that means I said well I understand I, I don't know who, who, I'm sure we'll look for where I, I don't know how we're going to do it but God is going to grant grace because um, when I saw the people outside, literally everywhere, it's like all the overflows down to the basement, all across, everywhere people can just stand and look inside here, across the road. No man has the power on his own to do this. It is God and it is because the feast is ready. This is only day one. So in the days that come, you see the kind of thing that can happen. It will happen. It's a grace that makes it happen. It's called an akazo. It's a compelling power of the spirit. It's not pride. It's the truth. It says all nations will flow to it. This is because of the lockdown that several people from other nations could not make it Africa, Europe, the US and so they are following online this is what happened under a very limited we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we had to constrain and constrain and constrain don't just celebrate it for me it is my prayer that every church in this city that our meetings and there are people to be saved there are people to be healed there's no need for empty pews that businesses will no longer be empty that that our schools will no longer be empty we have about 3.2 or so million people here there is still space for more the king's business requires haste are we together now praise the name of the lord now this is how we're going to do it 
let me pray for you first and then you pray and speak over my life I believe in your prayer I respect the grace that everybody carries I know that you call me a man of God but it takes one who is with God to discern who a man of God is and it is foolishness to trivialize the grace that you carry hallelujah praise the name of the Lord because I know that even though this is an inaugural service and I'm sorry we had to cut so many things in an attempt to still keep compliance ideally it would have been that at least we'll give a few people room to just say one or two things please forgive forgive all our limitations but I assure you that if your feet step this ground this night by the God of heaven you will not return the same Is it all right if I make an altar call? I believe in Jesus. And I know there are people here who are not saved. Please look at me. I'll make an altar call and then I'll pray. We'll just pray for the sick and we're done. Um, if you're outside, don't come in, please. All the overflows, when, when I make the altar call, you just move to your projector screen. Those by the roadside, just stand where you are and wave your hands. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? Now, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. I came and I saw the mighty move of God and this that is about to happen. I truly need Jesus. I want to start afresh or oh, I'm rededicating my life no matter where you are if you are in this auditorium around the gallery please whilst we're clapping I'd like you to leave that place very quickly and come and stand here run like there's fire on the mountain come to Jesus we are here for you come and We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Some will do what you do. This is the move. We need the move. Celebrate them as they come. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. All those who are coming, overflow one, two, three, the basement, outside, by the roadside, those following, those of you who are watching me by way of the internet from the US to UK, Asia, Africa, it's time to make it right with Jesus Christ. It's my joy and honor, what a harvest, the very first day, what a harvest. Listen to me. Many of you are making this decision for the first time. Some of you are rededicating your lives. It doesn't matter. No man condemns you. He gives you room to start afresh with him again. Please make sure you don't interrupt His Excellency protocol. Let there be people there, please, who are. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at me my dear people everybody ah, there will be such an outpouring in this place right now don't think it will be this quiet 
let me just finish the altar call praise the name of the Lord this is koinonia those of you who are out here please look at me hold on please you know there are some of you maybe just one minute just to reorient our minds there are some of us here who just come out for altar call but we are not intending to be serious with God God wants to help us but we must be ready to be serious with God are we together the grace is supplied but we must take advantage of it I thank you all of you for coming this is this is a mighty move of the spirit I like you to lift your right hand all of the overflows those following online you're following from your house you can just go on your knees or lift it up to Jesus please say this loud and clear from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem let it be from the depth of your heart those outside even if you are by the roadside say it you can still be saved say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight I have heard your word I, heard your word. I, believe, in you, I believe in you that you are the Son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I receive eternal life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that my sins are forgiven I receive the life of God from today and forever I go forward ever and backward never keep your hands lifted father we present to you the ones Jesus died for thank you because you are the only one who is able to save unto the uttermost I pray according to the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that a new beginning starts for you. Amen. Receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Amen. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray that from today you are built, you are established in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pray for you, but there are two of you just standing here. The power of God is going to come on you. I'm seeing that evil spirit must go. This is koinonia. Huh? so uh, that's one there I command that spirit to go now in the name of Jesus help them if it is true that is Jesus that you came to meet him no you shouldn't go back the same so there will be the first fruit every spirit those in front here if there is any spirit that ties you down right now I speak as one sent that you leave their destinies now and forever now and forever in the name of Jesus out of their lives out of their destinies I declare you are free free forever now very quickly please look at me all of you you will be back shortly but I want you to follow the counselor he's lifting a placard there please just follow them very quickly there will be a group of people who will just follow up on you and then you will join the service let's appreciate them as they go Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete katos, kete branda kata bako tos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.